Welcome, guys, once again. Good morning to you all. Um, good to see you. Glad you guys are doing well. Okay. All right. Uh, Kanan, can I request you to uh, just start us off with the word of prayer, please? I hope you can hear me. Yes. Can, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's pray. Our uh, dear uh, Heavenly Father, I praise you today morning, Lord. Lord, I thank you for this day, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the subject. Lord, I pray for each everyone in us, uh, us in, in our class, Lord. Lord, I pray for uh, Pastor Ocean. Lord, give him a good uh, wisdom to teach us and also give us a good understanding through your Holy Spirit to understand everything that he teaches. us. Lord, thank you for the day that you've given to us. Lord, thank you for the technology. Lord, give mm -hmm. us some more uh, understanding and uh, knowledge of your uh, uh, words, Lord. Lord, uh, help us to uh, everyone to get, get in fast, Lord. Lord, from the beginning till the end, our Holy Spirit should uh, give us a good wisdom and understanding of your word, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Kanan. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and share the notes. Right, um, so we, we stopped page 46 in the last class. All right, um, if, we can, if you could please allow me to do a quick recap of what we covered. Um, we'll do that quickly, okay? We'll take from, just do a quick recap from page 41, at the bottom of page 41, uh, the role of a worship pastor. Right, the role of a worship pastor. Uh, and we looked at the seven roles uh, it's it's not an exhaustive list, as I always say. Um, it's just a few main points, right? Uh, roles that are associated with the pastor. First one is the worship pastor as a priest, and how he's a bridge builder. He's a connection, right? He's he's the connect. Uh, we are all called to build bridges between a congregation uh, and God, isn't it? So that's worship pastor as a priest, and then worship pastor as a prophet, uh, worship pastor as a teacher and as a shepherd, as a pastor, right? worship pastor as an intercessor, a worship pastor as a mentor, right? And we see this uh, beautiful progression that will help uh, in the mentoring process. Um, that's helped me. And finally, worship pastor as an administrator, okay? Being a, being a good administrator, being organized, prioritizing your um, your roles, uh, your responsibilities, and everything that needs to be done. Okay, uh, that's effective. And uh, and then we saw the role of a worship team members. So first we saw the role of a worship pastor, and then we see the role of a worship team members. Okay. Um, one of the key points of this uh, section, role of a worship team members, is you are looking for a committed individual. Right, uh, nobody likes to work with a person who is not committed, isn't it? Uh, who says one thing but uh, does another, right? Uh, who overpromises but underdelivers? Okay, that's true in every uh, aspect of professional life, in as well, isn't it? Uh, you know, you uh, you don't overpromise and underdeliver, right? You, the professional saying is you under promise and over deliver that's when people believe the the quality of your work right that's when they can they know that you are committed to serving them similarly when it comes to ministry and in church uh, you are looking for the person who is committed 
right? Uh, who's uh, uh, who shares your vision? Who is excited about the vision that you sh- you have for the congregation, for the church, and for the team in itself? Okay, so you're looking for a member who is committed. All right, uh, and then the next section we see uh, we saw was trying to understand what is a rehearsal and the difference between rehearsal and practice. Okay, practice is personal. What does that mean? So this Sunday I am leading worship um, uh, in in church. That means I'm going to work on the songs by myself. I'm going to practice the chords. I'm going to prepare all of that. You know, keep it ready. Practice the songs. You know, the guitar, whichever instrument that I am playing with. That is all personal. That's just me, isn't it? And then. Saturday morning, I meet the team for rehearsal. So for that rehearsal, when we meet Saturday morning, everybody, like the keyboardist, the bass guitarist, the electric guitarist, the drummer, they've all learned their parts for the song. And they come prepared. They've practiced separately, individually, personally at home. And then now when we come together, we start discussing about the dynamics of the song. Like just um, just add a few things. Okay, hey guys, before I start off with the first song, I'm going to read from Psalm 66. And then we're going to start the first song. So details like that will be worked out in the rehearsal. All right, so it's very important for us for you leaders, even if you are not musically, uh, uh, you know, inclined, I keep saying this. Uh, I please uh, apologies for sounding redundant, uh, but it's very important that even you, if you're not a musician, to know the difference between practice and rehearsal, so that you hold your team accountable. Okay, and the, or the team that is under your supervision, you know what is happening with them as well. Okay. Um, so that the importance of rehearsal and practice is what was looked at this section. And then the role of the band. Uh, the band is expected to be, be musicians who are able to play skillfully and serve before the Lord. And as we saw in First Chronicles and in 15 and chapter 16 uh, and in chapter 25, we see that the musicians who ministered unto the Lord in the temple, they were all skillfully trained in their craft. Right? They were skillfully trained in their craft. But then they will learn something about skill itself. Okay, uh, here's this definition that says skill has been defined as the ability to do something well. Okay, to do something really well. Okay, whatever it is, you're a graphic designer, do that skillfully. You're a video editor, do that beautifully. Right, uh, so the skill is defined as the ability to do something well. Okay, then we went on to see, um, excuse me. Excuse me. I'm glad I muted my mic on time. <laughs> uh, they came into that. Huh? <laughs> Anyways, sorry guys. Um, it's the weather. It's, um, so then we see, uh, we went into, uh, just to understand skill a little deeper, uh, you know, uh, we saw these three points. That skill is a gift from God for His glory. Okay, when he made us in his image, right? See, God is our creator, isn't it? And we were created, right? So he is a creator. We are created. That means we are creative. Okay, we can be creative, isn't it? Um, That's why God gave us trees and not chairs and tables, right? We were, because we are creative, He's given us the skill to use the wood that the tree gives us to make chairs and tables, etc. Isn't it? So skill is a creative gift from God for His glory. Right? And skill must be developed, of course. Isn't it? That's why people go uh, to, to universities or you know colleges to just to hone their skill, to learn more about the skill or that they're good at and whatnot, etc. It has to be developed. You cannot be complacent and say, oh yeah, I'm good at it, I'm talented and you know, uh, not work on getting better. And finally, which is a very important point here is skill 
doesn't make worship more acceptable before God. Just because you are skillful, um, it doesn't make your worship acceptable before God. What makes it possible is your heart of worship, is your humility. Okay? Um, that's, 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 that's the beauty of skill and, and humility combined. All right, so when, you, when you're looking to get an individual, uh, you know, into your ministry, into your team, uh, there's this question that's always being asked, you know. Uh, okay, so when you, uh, you know, have taken a, a member into your worship team, are you looking for the skill or are you looking for the heart? That's the question uh, I've been asked or, we, you know, we've been asked all the time, uh, you know, as worship pastors. Um, in my opinion, and my answer to that has always been the same. It is, look, skill can be developed, but the heart, when I say the heart, it's the character of a person, isn't it? And the character and um, the skill can be developed. Uh, it is a lot more easier to develop than the character of a person. Um, so I rather work with a person whose skill is a little lower uh, but their character is better than their skill so it, it becomes easy because if their character is better if their character is is humble that if they are teachable uh, then they are willing to learn and skill gets better isn't it but then if the character is like full of pride saying you know i'm better than everybody what i know is right uh, i am always right uh, you know, and the skill is up there, it's going to affect everybody in the team, isn't it? Um, so that's that's the importance, uh, you know, for us to understand the importance of skill, okay? Sorry. In this next section, we see that the skills of the worship leader. The worship leader uh, is a sacred, strange, profound concoction of effective musical skill, organization, and preparation that's administration, one of the roles of a worship pastor, isn't it? Um, experience, who practices their instrument, their craft regularly, leadership ability, relational ability, calling, character, intuition, natural gifting, and God's grace above all. Okay, those are uh, some of the skills. Uh, it's like a mix, a combination of all of this um, that a worship leader is expected to have. So it takes time, isn't it, to develop such skill. Um, anyways, the next thing is, what are the character traits of an effective worship leader? Once again, we saw a few uh, points here. You, you need to ask yourself these questions. Are they humble? Do they have a vibrant, secret, secret life with God? Are they able to take direction or correction? Um, you know, uh, do they give importance to accolades and affirmations to, uh, of people? More in, is that more important to them? Uh, are they doing what they do to serve or to gain the spotlight? Are they good husbands, um, wives, parents, sons, daughters at home? Are they willing to train others? Are they willing to teach? Now, are they skilled at what they do? Are they teachable? Are they willing to quietly care for the poor? as much as they are willing to stand on a stage? Are they loving, gentle, generous, et cetera, et cetera, isn't it? Um, and then we see that the role of the singers, the main function of the singers is to stand before the congregation as a visual inspiration to worship. They need to be worshipers first before vocal ability and able to radiate worship, okay? The main function of the singers is to stand before the congregation as a visual inspiration to worship. They need to be worshipers first and be able to radiate worship. Okay, that is the role of the singers, okay? Encouraging the congregation uh, by themselves being worshipers first. And then the congregation sees that, you know, and, and they can relate to what is happening in the personal, in the individual's life and then follow. Okay, uh, that's at the bottom of page 46. Now we go on to page 47, more practical um, uh, pointers uh, in worship ministry, in the organizational aspect of worship ministry. Okay, um, 
auditions why do we hold auditions why do we have auditions uh you know uh it's a, it, it, it it's and no problem Kira. uh why hold auditions so just a few pointers there okay uh, but before again um you know you you, you you you've seen some of the auditions that uh, that has happened at APC, but so uh, in your opinion, right? Uh, I want to hear from you. Why do you think auditions are important, or do you think auditions are important, or or because it's a church, we shouldn't have auditions? What, what do you think? You just say, okay, whoever wants to join the worship team, please come. Talk to me. Hey, talk to me, guys. Uh, okay, okay. Audition, uh, it is important since uh, the worship leaders and the, the, the whole team, the whole group is leading worship. And it's not, uh, it is not just uh, worshiping alone for ourselves, but leading the whole congregation is a, a totally different thing. And just as the Bible says, if you, uh, when you worship God, uh, uh, the word says skillfully worship God. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other important thing is sorry, they uh, lost you there. Okay, I think uh, they is disconnected. Um, okay. Thanks uh, for sharing. Anyways, Dave, if you can hear me, no problem. Uh, what else, guys? Uh, Thomas Kanan, why do you think auditions are important? Uh, as you were saying, but we are church, no? Why do we have to have auditions? It's not American so worship, Idol. Uh, <laughs> worship team, uh, they're leading the entire congregation. Mm -hmm. So even in the Bible also, uh, as we studying last few weeks, when David appointed uh, worship leaders in, in his uh, mm -hmm. time, he selected a skillful one. He appointed very skillful and talented one. Mm -hmm. The thing is, uh, anybody can sing for a Lord if they're, wish, if they're not talented also. They can join with the worship team, but worship team is leading entire congregation. Mm -hmm. So that should be present in a good good manner and uh, with right. the skillful talents that's why i uh, think audition is need um that's very important for in that point of view right thanks thomas thank you for sharing that yes uh, yeah like uh, first chronicles 25 says right uh, the musicians were all uh, skillfully trained as we've referred to that scripture so many many times right it's, it's important it's easy to maintain members teams okay yeah. Okay, so I think we're all in agreement uh, in, uh, you know, that auditions are important, that it helps us, uh, you know, have the right people in the team uh, who can serve better, right? Um, okay, so why hold auditions? Just a few pointers here. So have a focus point for people to connect with worship ministry. Okay, uh, it's like a point of contact. So, uh, you know, before we have auditions, we make announcements, right? Okay, on so and so date, uh, on, on this Sunday, after the service, we are going to have uh, worship team auditions. And all those who are interested, just stay back. So, and people after the service stay back. So that's like one of the main point of contact with the congregation, with some of the people from the congregation, isn't it? So they know, okay, they meet with the worship pastors. Um, and that's the contact with worship ministry, isn't it? Um, and why we hold auditions? It's because to add people to the worship team, to add more people to the worship team, to grow the worship team, isn't it? Uh, so more people can serve. So we'll have more volunteers. That's one. That's another thing to increase the level of uh, 
musical presentation of your music to increase the level of musical presentation of your music um hey dave uh, no problem uh, it's okay uh, we are kind of understood <laughs> um okay thanks for joining back in there all right and the fourth point there is to provide a consistent common and helpful method of growing worship ministry personnel okay it is a uh, it's it's a it's a it's a good practice it's a good you know to be consistent um, and a common method in growing the worship ministry okay to give uh, away and expand the ministry okay so that's why we hold auditions so um, you know th those are the like the few main points all right uh, let me just take you through the current audition process at apc how it works at apc um so worship team auditions will be held once or twice a year based on the requirements okay prior to the auditions uh, we have something called the pre audition meeting okay so let's give a proper example all right um let's say we are in the month of september okay so let's say that sunday 19th september the 19th is the auditions that was last sunday was the auditions okay uh, but on september 12th which is the previous uh, Sunday, a uh, uh, one Sunday prior to the auditions, we will have something called the pre-audition meeting. We will meet with every individual who have registered for the audition. Okay, so we have this form that they have to fill out on our website. Uh, you know, that form ha will have a, a bunch of questions as to, uh, you know, their name, their contact information, when they got saved, are they baptized, do they believe in speaking in tongues, um, are they open uh, to serving in different locations at APC, and so on, just those general questions, okay? So that there's a form that they have to fill in, a registration form. Once they have done, we get the names, right? Uh, and on, on, on a Sunday, uh, before uh, one Sunday pr before the auditions, we have a pre-audition meeting with them, and in that meeting, uh, you know, we we brief them about the vision, we share the goals of the worship ministry, and the requirements of a worship team member. Okay, we set, we share our expectations from them. Okay, that's one of the things that happens, uh, and also uh, we tell them that uh, you know we, we will be sharing the song links. With them okay so for example where is that right okay so on fulfillment of the eligibility criteria the songs the youtube links with the instructions for preparations will be emailed to the applicants okay uh, once the after the pre-audition meetings are over we will send out the uh the song links it, it could be a youtube link or you know whatever uh, and we'll tell them to come prepared with that song. Okay, learn their songs, learn their part and come. And then on the day of the audition, the applicants uh, will be evaluated as per the predetermined criteria. Okay, uh, on the day of the auditions, uh, you know, we have an evaluation form. Uh, for example, uh, let's say if, I, if a vocalist is auditioning, right, if a singer is auditioning, uh, we have certain parameters. Uh, do they sing in pitch? It's very important for a vocalist, isn't it? <laughs> to sing in pitch and to hold the pitch, okay? Uh, that they are not tone deaf, right? That's one of the parameters. Uh, do they sing on time, in time? Do they keep rhythm? Do they rush or, uh, you know, are they, too, are they going too fast or are they going too slow? Uh, etc etc isn't it so and then their overall presentation overall musicality their understanding of the song their in, how well they are connected with the song their emotions of it so they will be uh, kind of evaluated on all of those parameters okay now after after all of that the selected applicants will then go through an orientation process which is about four weeks at apc so what Okay, uh, orientation process after which they will be evaluated once again and rostered for ministering in worship. So this whole process, this whole audition process at APC um, will take you about two months, at least two months, even before you start singing or playing or, um, on serving in the worship team. It's quite a lengthy process. 
Okay, but it's 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 a very refining process. It's it it tests uh, the individual's character. It tests uh, you know their interest. Uh, it it tests their heart, uh, their motives, their intentions. Okay, so are they willing to go through that process to serve in the worship team? Okay, because we take the worship ministry very very seriously, even before we get the individuals. It's not to say we are better. We don't want to, in all of that. No. But if you're going to be serving in worship ministry, uh, it's it, it, it's very important, isn't it, that to have the right individual, uh, you know, who has the right heart. So that's why our orientation process is like a refining process. It's it's um, it's a little longer than uh, maybe other churches. I don't know. Okay. Uh, all right, so uh, once again, so what happens in this orientation process is, uh, very quickly, guys, so all the selected applicants, we, we tell them that, okay, guys, for the next month, all of you will go and attend the practice sessions of the current worship team band, okay? All of them will go to every worship team practice and they will just observe how the current band is practicing, how they, uh, you know, how they meet for the rehearsal, uh, how they come prepared for the songs. So, and by the time they start getting rostered in the team, they have an idea. Okay, so this is how it works. They get a feeling. Okay, this is how it functions. This is how you should learn the song. This is how you have to come prepared for the rehearsal. Okay, so all of that happens in the orientation process. All right. Uh, any questions, guys? No questions? Okay. Okay, so now that we've seen uh, how the audition, uh, why the audition works, uh, you know, why do we hold auditions and, and uh, how the audition process at APC uh, functions. Uh, now let's look at how we go about rostering the worship teams. Okay, so we have five different locations at ABC. One is the central, north, south, east, west. Okay, some of you I have served in some of, uh, in each of these locations, if not all. Um, okay, so you know how that works. So, um, rostering worship teams, how uh, how we do it. Here's an example. Okay, just an example. So around the fifteenth or eighteenth, between that window of every month, a message is sent out to the worship team. Uh, currently, we use uh, WhatsApp as a platform. Uh, okay, what we, we make a bunch of broadcast list, okay? Uh, you know, and you can do that in on WhatsApp, right? The broadcast. So we have broadcast uh, list for central worship team members, south, north, south, uh, east, and west. Um, and then a message is sent out, okay? Below, this is an example of a message that I sent out, Um almost two years ago or something, right? Okay. This is just an example of a message that I send out uh, on, on WhatsApp to all the worship team members. Okay. Uh, ho, ho, ho. You know, hope you're doing awesome as ever. We are halfway through November. That's around 15th or 18th, uh, which means it's time to finish the year with a bang. Kindly send your availability for December's worship team roster to me by Wednesday, November 20th evening, please. So I give them a deadline of telling when, by when they are to send me their availability. Okay. And most of them, and I tell them, okay, there are four Sundays in December plus two combined services, special service because it's December. And we have Christmas and New Year's Eve service or New Year service, FYI, worship teams. Uh, so, I mean, all the information will be shared, right? I share the dates, uh, the Sundays uh, uh, that are in the month of December, so they know the dates and whatnot. And then additional information saying Wednesday 25th is the combined service, Wednesday 1st is the combined service, uh, no watch night service, etc. And just to make it a little interesting and funny, okay, say, you know, it's, hope you're not tired already because it's a long month, isn't it? December... <laughs> Um, it's like almost seven services. Uh, okay, so I send this message out. And then one by one, um, and all of these locations will also have worship 
coordinators. Okay, Central will have one person, North, South, East, West will have their, its own coordinators. So the worship team members of each location will send in their availability to that to their worship coordinator of that location. Okay, they'll say, hey, uh, I'm free on the 15th and the 22nd, or I, I'm free on the 8th and the 22nd. Okay, so that's example. So, and so worship team coordinators collects all this information. Some of them send it to me as well. We collect all this information and then we start doing the roster. Okay, uh, not sure if all of you all have seen the roster. Let me, uh, let me just quickly see if I can... Uh, get that for us. Give me a second. Okay. Sorry, guys. Just give me one second. Okay, Excel, I'm ready for you. Microsoft Excel is misbehaving, guys. Sorry, it's not my fault. Okay. Yo, what is happening? Uh, okay, there you are. All right. So sorry, guys. Thank you for your patience. Okay, uh, can you all see? Yeah, we yeah? can. Okay, all right. Thanks, Dave. Uh, all right, so uh, this is just... Uh, a glance of one of last year's worship team roster and uh, how it's uh, how it's made okay so this is for the month of january 2020 um so i get in all their uh, you know details saying okay who's gone who's free and so on so so one of the there's multiple tabs as you can see uh, this tab is for worship leaders uh, you know so i fill in all the worship leaders only not the band, all the worship leaders who are free and available for that particular Sunday. So all the Sundays, the dates I mentioned this side. Um, and then you have the worship leaders and the locations. Okay, North, uh, this individual is going to, uh, you know, be leading and whatnot. Okay. Uh, you see Akoso's name here. <laughs> uh, who used to lead at the North. Okay. So that's the worship leaders uh, tab. Then you have at the bottom here, you see all the locations uh, sheet. So it's central, uh, you know, we have all the Sundays again. And then you have the worship leaders mentioned here. So all I do is just, you know, central, I just copy and then paste here their names. John Paul, Anand, Jeremy, Roshan, uh, Keys, uh, you know, whoever is free, I put their name. If no, if nobody is free for the fifth, I just leave it blank. Acoustic guitar, acoustic guitar two, or electric guitar, eddy, bass, drums, vocals, uh, MD, whoever. The more details like uh, sound head, uh, who will be doing the sound head, practice time, date, venue, children's church, is there's anybody leading, okay? This is the backup vocalist that you see vocalists here, okay? And same thing that happens for every location, south. Uh, it's the same format. North, it's a smaller band, so here you will not see, uh, you know, the drums or bass because it's a smaller congregation. It's a smaller team. Uh, not many volunteers are available, so it's just most of the time it's just one person. 
like you can see it's just me leading worship and the acoustic guitar john paul um it's just one person okay so it's kind of manageable there east is slightly a little bigger okay so you have two worship leaders and acoustic guitar percussion vocals um, and west again is a smaller congregation so it's just small teams there okay um so this is the this is the way we we do uh, rosters at apc uh, you know there there are many different uh, platforms uh, tech a more advanced uh, platforms that uh, you know that a lot of the churches in the west or you know more um, modernized uh, churches use one is called planning center um, that's um, yeah it, you know where, where you have to pay for that software so for now we are using excel i think it, it's it's doing the work you know so yeah you can, i guess can i get an idea of uh, what goes on uh, how you know into uh, rostering. I'll just stop sharing now. Okay, so it sometimes it takes me about uh, if people are available, everything goes well, I can finish the roster in two days. But sometimes it almost takes me four days uh, just going through, thinking through, okay, who's available, who, who can I put where? And sometimes not everybody is going to respond. You know, although my message uh, says, okay, respond to me by so-and-so date, uh, not everybody responds. You know, that's another, you know, challenge of leading a worship team or worship ministry is uh, you have to respond. You have to go back and reach out to them and say, like, hey, uh, you know, what is your, what are your availability dates? You know, and then they'll give. Um, so all of that goes on into uh, putting a roster together. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, that's awesome. All right, let me share the notes again. Are you guys with me, right? Uh, so. Yeah, we are. Okay. Awesome, awesome. So you see, worship ministry is just not about leading worship. <laughs> it's more exciting. Uh, all right. Okay. So that's about, uh, you know, worship, uh, putting together uh, and rostering worship teams for Sunday services. Now, once that is done, uh, Again, just just uh, a little bit of the spiritual aspect, uh, you know, in this chapter, we'll talk more in depth of the spiritual aspect in the next chapter as well. But uh, how do we encourage or teach our worship team members to prepare to lead in a worship service? Okay, how do they how should they plan and prepare for a worship service? A few pointers that we expect of them. Okay. Uh, we teach that worship is a spiritual activity. Okay, worship is a spiritual activity, as mentioned in John chapter 4, verse 23, 24, uh, where Jesus says, you know, well, the Father is seeking true worshipers who will worship in spirit and in truth. Right? We worship by the Spirit, a Holy Spirit that abides in us, who empowers us. And we worship in truth, uh, and one of the aspects is through the word of God, because John chapter 17, verse 17 says, you sanctify me by your truth. Your word is truth. Okay, so worship is a spiritual activity. And just before verse 23, uh, Jesus says in verse 22, he says, you Samaritans worship that you do not know or understand Right? You do not have a revelation, but we worship what we do know. That means there is an understanding. There is a revelation. Okay, so in worship, there is a revelation, an encounter that is required that, uh, to, because it's a spiritual activity. Uh, must be done with anointing, with the anointing of God. Okay, must be done with the anointing of God. Okay, uh, if you look at Exodus chapter 30, uh, which if you don't, uh, if you would please turn with me to Exodus chapter 30, verse 22 to uh, 33. Okay, Exodus chapter 30. Uh, was 22 to uh, 33. Can someone uh, read that, please? It 
someone please go ahead and read that? Okay, Exodus chapter 30, verse 22 to 33. Then the Lord said to Moses, Take the following fine spices, 500 shekels, a liquid myrrh, 500 shekels of liquid myrrh, half as much, that is 250 shekels of fragrant cinnamon, 250 shekels of fragrant cane, 500 shekels of cassia, all according to the sanctuary shekel, and a hen of olive oil. Make these into a sacred anointing oil, a fragrant blend, the work of a perfumer. It will be the sacred anointing oil. Verse 26, Then use it to anoint the tent of meeting, the ark of the testimony, the table and all its articles, the lampstand and its accessories, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering, and all its utensils, and the basin with its stand. You shall consecrate them, so they will be most holy, and whatever touches them will be holy. Verse 30, Anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them, so that they may serve me as priests. Say to the Israelites, this is to be my sacred anointing oil for the generations to come. Do not pour it on men's bodies and do not make any oil with the same formula. Wow. It is sacred and you are to consider it sacred. Whoever makes perfume like it and whoever puts it on anyone other than priest must be cut off from his people. Okay, uh, that's, that's, that's the seriousness of uh, the anointing oil, uh, the anointing of God. Uh, and and one of the ways we expect our team members to prepare themselves is say that we must be anointed, right? Uh, anointed not just for anointing's sake, but like it says uh, in verse 30, anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them. Okay, we are to be anointed to be set apart, Every utensil in the tabernacle, every furniture was anointed in the tabernacle, right? So everything that we do must be done with the anointing of God as worship and ministry unto him, okay? Uh, and the third point there is worship is a key that opens the door. Worship is a key that opens the door to what? To experience the presence of God. In Psalm 22 verse 3, uh, it says, He dwells or He inhabits the praises of His people or He is enthroned on the praises of His people. Right? And then it says, Have victory over the enemy. It's a key. Worship is a key that opens the door to victory over the enemy. Psalm 8 verse 2 says, You have silenced with my praise, you have silenced my enemy. Okay, so uh, just understanding that worship is a spiritual activity and everything that is done must be done, done with uh, anointing of God, uh, holy uh, unto the Lord. Okay, and uh, another key, uh, key point is that we need to understand that worship is the key. We cannot uh, take for granted, uh, you know, every worship service. Uh, you know, because it's 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 a spiritual warfare. Okay, uh, how each worship team member should prepare for service. How each worship team member should prepare for service. One, a personal life of worship during the week. Personal life of worship during the week. Prepare yourself through the week. You uh, week. Uh, secondly, consecration of your personal life. And finally, a consistent personal prayer life. Okay, a consistent personal prayer life, which changes you, increases personal intimacy with God, increases your sensitivity to God. And then finally, anointing of the Holy Spirit. 
come spiritually prepared for being part of the worship team. Okay. Um, it's one of the key examples here, or the key points here, or key takeaways of this section is very, very simple. Uh, we emphasize a lot on the personal life. Okay, your personal time with God, your personal intimacy with the Lord, your personal walk with the Lord. Okay, are you reading the word enough? Are you studying the word? Uh, how is your prayer life? Is that consistent? Are you working on it? Are you spending enough time in prayer? Because it changes us. It increases our intimacy with the Lord. Right? It increases our sensitivity to God's voice and his leading. And the fourth point there is very important as well, right? Anointing of the Holy Spirit or being filled with the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, and one point I just want to leave us with uh, before we conclude this section is uh, in Ephesians chapter 5, in Ephesians chapter 5, uh, Paul says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Right? You know that verse, right? Don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, now, to the most of us as Christians, to follow uh, that first part of the command is very easy. Don't be drunk with wine. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I'm a Christian. You know, uh, I won't be drunk with wine. But the question is, do we also obey the second part of the command? That is being filled with the Holy Spirit. Have you asked yourself, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? If not, how does one be filled with the Holy Spirit? Right? Uh, in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is referred to as the anointing oil so many times, isn't it? He's, he's referred to as so many things. But one of the things he's referred to as that he is the oil of intimacy. He is the anointing oil, right? Um, so what are you doing uh, to keep that flame burning? So we emphasize on all of this, uh, and uh, you know, to all our worship team members on how they are they are ought to uh, prepare themselves uh, spiritually, okay, for the worship team uh, for the worship service. Okay, uh, we'll stop here uh, at, at page forty eight and, and and the beginning of page forty nine. Uh, we'll take a quick break. I can take two minutes extra, and I'll see you see you all for the next section. Okay, take a guess.